coming to you from the Friendship UNC Parsonage. And this week, in our Taste and See book club, we are talking all about bread. So we are going to be making Andrew's 18-minute matzah. Two 
the five pieces. I'm going to split the difference and go with four. So, we're going to lightly flour our surface. And then we are going to roll this out. Uh, we should also lightly flour the rolling pin. Good job, Chrissy. <laughs> Yes, please uh, flour your rolling pin as well. Otherwise, your bread's just gonna immediately stick to it, just like mine did. So let's try this again. But Hercules has to put in his two cents. So we're gonna roll this out. Okay, well, this is not coming out so great. So let me try plan B. This is the baking sheet I'm going to bake them on. <laughs> this is a soap hat mat. It's non-stick. It's so you don't have to use parchment paper or oil or anything. So I'm just going to roll them directly on here, and that way I don't have to worry about picking them up. Right? So we're going to roll them as thin as we can get them. sort of shape that makes sense, something that you can use as a butt bread or a cracker. If you want it to be really fancy, you could in fact cut these into nice little squares or circles or whatever you want them to be, but <laughs> I am not quite that fancy, let's be honest. We are just struggling to get through here. All right. So, let's see how we're doing on time. Okay, we've still got 12 minutes left, so we are doing great on time. Remember with each one, to put a little bit of flour on top so that it doesn't stick to your rolling pin. Like I said earlier, that's why I, we don't wanna do too much flour to begin with because we're going to add more as we go along. Number three. Let's get number four down the bottom, maybe. All right. So, last one. Let's see if we can roll this out. Again, it's as thin as you can get it. It's going to depend on the type of flour you're using and all of that chips. So, rolling pin done. And I'm just going to get some of this flour off my hands because it makes me crazy. Um, so, there we go. Get a towel here. Okay. So, our next step is going to be placing them right on this cookie sheet. Again, I'm, this is a soap hat mat. This can go right in the oven. If you don't have this, it's not required. It's not even in the book. It's just like the way I like to do baking because it's easier to clean up, but it's certainly not required. You can either oil your baking sheet or you could put down a piece of parchment. Now, the next step is the fork and we are gonna put a lot of little holes in these. And that's for a couple of reasons. The main one being that this is supposed to be unleavened bread. We are commemorating the Exodus. We are commemorating when the Israelites had to be prepared to leave at the spur of the moment. And so God told them, do not let your bread rise. Bake it unleavened. So, as I said earlier, with time and water and flour, your bread will in fact rise. So we poke these little holes to keep the bread from rising so that we can commemorate the exodus. We also poke these little holes because it gives it a nice little texture. So make sure the whole thing is covered in holes. It's kind of like your Ritz cracker, how you want it to have all the little holes in it. Let's just get this one. 
And there's our oven up to temperature and we are 10 minutes into this video. So we are doing great. Now, um, place cookie sheet, dust it with flour and cover baking parchment and prick well with fork. Bake until crisp and beginning to brown between four to five minutes. So I think that we are going to be ahead. So I'm gonna pop these in the oven and in four to five minutes, I'll be back. Okay, so we are taking these out of the oven and we have one whole minute to spare on our 18 minute matzo. So we're gonna put them right here. And as you can see, they are in fact nice and flat. So, according to the recipe that Margaret gives us, you can make these a little more tasty and a little less kosher in a lot of ways. Um, you could add salt or oil to your recipe. Some people like to um, melt chocolate and dip the salted matzah in it and let it harden like a chocolate bar. That's delicious. Um, you can put your favorite cheese or goat cheese on it. But when I was in school and it was Passover, my Jewish friends who would have to bring their sandwiches on masa during the week of Passover. And the, nine times out of ten, that meant peanut butter and jelly and masa. So I have got some almond butter and some strawberry rhubarb jam because I love rhubarb. Um, that I am going to put right on here. This is so hot, but that's okay. We are going to give it a try. Perfect. Delicious. It's nice and flat and crispy. You may want to add salt to give it a little more flavor, but really, it is very good. So, I would encourage all of you, give the 18 minute matzo challenge a try. And don't forget to join us tonight, either in the parlor at church or on Zoom as we discuss a loaf of bread fresh out of the oven in our book club. Thanks for joining me and I will see you in church.